Hi everyone. From now, we'd like to start presenting Operation Lifetime IT Colorful Panda Footprint. In this presentation, we'd like to share new threat information that we acquire through observing and analyzing the attacks by an APT attack group TA48. A. As an introduction, let me briefly introduce the members who authored this paper. Fumio Ozawa, Shogo Hayashi, and Rintaro Koike, all three are SOC analysts and malware analysts at NTT Security Japan. In addition, Shogo Hayashi is the co-founder of Society, an information sharing group of SOC analysts in Japan. Rintaro Koike is the founder of a cyber security research team known as NaoSec. So, as an introduction, we explain about the overview of APT attack by TA-428 and our motivation. TA-428 is an APT attack group considered to attribute to China. The group mainly targets on East Asia and have been running an operation called Lagtime IT recently. Operation Lagtime IT is an attack campaign that have been running since at least March 2019. The target is government agencies in East Asia. So far, it is reported that the group uses Royal Road RTF Weaponizer, Poison Ivy, and Cotex rat. According to a report by Footprint, a proof point, uh, Operation Lifetime IT is an APT attack campaign by TA48. It targets on government agencies in East Asia. This campaign is still active as of 2020. There are just a few reports available regarding to Operation Lifetime IT or TA48. The existing reports cover only the early stages of the attack and didn't refer to the actual compromised activities. However, we have, we have successfully observed the group's compromising activity in detail, including lateral movement and unknown malware. In this presentation, we introduce two attack cases. Then, we share an op overview of Operation Lifetime IT by TA428 and details analysis on each stage of, of compromising. We hope that this information will help you to detect and define yourself from attacks by TA428. First, let's look at the first attack caused by TA428. This slide shows the overview of attack case 1. By opening a LUA document, it exploits CB 2080-0798 and drops Poison IV on the startup directory for Microsoft Office World. The dropped Poison IV is launched when a word file is opened after the drop for the first time. This Poison IV communicates with C and C server and downloads, expands, and executes the three CAB files. The three CAB files are Credential Stealer, NBT Scan Tool, and Dropper. The Dropper CAB file contains a DLL file. It creates exe file and DLL file when launched by LANDLL32.exe. Exe file is a legitimate executable file signed by Intel. As a result of DLL side loading, the exe file loads a DLL file in the same directory. The DLL was hot extract. The group then executed credential stealer and NPT scan tool, persist 
پوت اکس رد انستوپت اپریشن پاست بی کروسلی لک ات دا روا دوکیمنت یو تو انیشیت دی اتاک این اتاک کیس وان A Lua document file is an RTF file. We think that this RTF file was created using a tool called Royal Road RTF Weaponizer. As soon as opening this RTF file using Microsoft Word, the enclosed code exploits CVE 2080-0798 and encoded shellcode is executed. Shellcode decodes an object 8.t. Then it saves the decoded data in a file with .wll extension. As a result of saving this file in the world startup directory, this file is automatically loaded when Microsoft Word is launched. Next, we explain about Poison Ivy used in case one. Poison Ivy is a rat that has been used by APT groups in China since mid of 2000s. The slide shows the startup sequence of Poison IB that we observed this time. The shell code in the document file mentioned area places. Use res.dll, that is Poison IB, in the Word startup directory. When Microsoft Word is launched in next time, the malicious code is executed by loading the DLL file in the startup directory. If the command line string contains word.exe, which means that it is launched by Microsoft Word, Poison Ivy executes a command shown in the slide that calls function DLL entry 10. The function DLL entry 10 Restore a backdoor program by decoding certain data with XOR and RC4. Then launch the restored backdoor. This slide shows the decoded configuration data. Port 443 and port 8080 were available on CNC server. The encryption key used for communicating with CNC server was the same value as the value reported by Proofpoint. Next, let's talk about CNC communication by Poison IB. Regarding to the CNC communication by Poison IB, we observed we found the same feature as the variant of Poison IB reported as SPIB. Please refer the blog post authored by Palo Alto Networks for detail of SPIB. The URL is shown in the slide. As shown in the figure, SPIB sends and receives payload compressed of padding header and data encrypted by Camellia. The padding header starts with the padding size in the first byte, followed by the padding data, and ends with the double padding size in the last byte. Next, we explain about Cortex RAT, used in case one. Cortex RAT is an original RAT that TA428 has been using. The behavior of Cortex RAT we observed basically has the same characteristic as reported in the blog post by Proofpoint. The table in this slide shows the difference in decoded configuration data 
between our observation and the blog post. Value for address and port of C and C server and password fields are the same, but the value for mark field was different from that of reported by proof point. Next, we explain about credential stealer and environment scanner used in case one. As for credential stealer, this tool is an Outlook password recovery tool called Outlook Password Dump. Its latest version is a commercial tool. The group used this tool to retrieve account information stored in Outlook. As for environment scanner, this tool is NetBIOS name server scanner called NVT Scan. The source code of this tool is publicly available. The group used this tool to scan surrounding networks to search connected hosts. From here, let's look at the second attack case by T428. This slide shows the overview of attack case 2. Because the initial stages of case 2 is basically the same as case 1, this slide only shows the different points. The group checked target environment and stored information in case 1, but the group additionally did further compromise in case 2. The group downloaded, expanded, and executed additional two CAP files. One is a checker to investigate whether the target is vulnerable for MS-17 or 1.0. Another is a tool that actually exploits MS-17 or 1.0. Using this, the group injected malicious DLL into Elsa's process on the victim. The DLL file injected was poison IP B. However, the CMC server that poison IP B communicated with was different from the CMC server that poison IP A communicated with. Using the poison IP B, the group continued compromising and successfully attacked to other two hosts. This slide shows the attack sequence on the victim host. On host A, three CAB files were downloaded, expanded, and uh, expanded and executed. One was two stealing usernames, belonging domain, and password. The second was net bio scanner, and the third was rat that we called dmanger. On host B, one CAP file and one malicious DLL were downloaded, expanded, and executed. The CAP file con contained an exe file disguised as a legitimate tool provided as Windows Resource Kit. The malicious DLL was re registered as a service by executing this exe file. The DLL executed as a service was a RAT that we called NCC Torsion. The group then attempted further compromise using the, using the stolen Active Directory administrator password. However, the password was old one and further compromise was failed. Then the group left the victim host. Next, we explain about scan tool and export tool used in case 2. Regarding to scan tool, this is a tool to check if the target system is vulnerable for MS-17 or 1.0. 
The original code publicly available is written in Python, and the file we observed was in .exe format converted by file installer. The attacker used this tool to search vulnerable hosts. Regarding the exploit tool, this is a tool that actually exploits MS-17 overall. Again, the original code publicly available is written in Python, and the file we observed was in .exe format converted by PyInstaller. Next, we explain about Poison IVB used in case 2. This slide shows the startup sequence of Poison IVB. As explained, MS-17 O1O, exporting to inject in and executes the DL shown in the slide to error source process on remote hosts. These two DL files are the Poison IVB. One is for 32-bit environment and another is for 64-bit environment. As soon as the DLL is executed, it drops three files shown in, show in the slide. The first is a multimedia player called Port Player. This is a legitimate file with value sign and its file name is portplayermini.exe. The second is a malware file named portplayer.dll. And the third is an encoded configuration data file named pme13.tmp. Legitimate portplayermini.exe loads malware portplayer.dll. And portplayer.dll gets configuration data by decoding pme13.tmp and start working as a rat. And this slide shows the configuration data for Poison IBB. Same as Poison IB in case 1, port 443 and port 8080 were available on CMC server. The other data are different from that of first Poison IB. Next, we explain about credential stealer B used on host A in case 2. This is original tool that the group developed and had a function to steal user names, domain names, and passwords from the error source process. As shown in the slide, executing this tool shows the stolen account information. Um, from here, we explain about new route pmanga used on host A. This route file contains path to pdb file as shown in the slide. Looking at this file path, the string pmanga was included this in this in the directory directory name which seems to represent this rat. They may be a type of D manager. However, decided to name this new rat after this spelling. Next is the startup sequence and persistence for Tmanga. Tmanga is placed and executed by Poison IBB. Then, Tmanga drops test.dll by ex extracting data from its resource section and expands it. It then drops master.exe on temp directory by copying itself. Lastly, Tmanga executes the command in the slide and launch test.dll. Test.dll creates a registry key 
shown in the slide for persistence, then start working as a rod. So this slide shows the decoded configuration data from T Mangard. The configuration data has three CNC servers. The IP address of CNC servers are the same, but the port numbers are different. If Tmanga failed connecting the first CNC server, it then tried connecting the second CNC server. Next is the communication with CNC server by Tmanga. Tmanga communicates with CNC server using original payload structure on TCP. TCP payload is composed of four bytes, four bytes header that represents data size and encrypted, encrypted data. The data encrypted using RC4. The key length is 500 to 12 bits, and the key value is as shown in the slide. This slide shows the decrypted data. Decrypted data is composed of four bytes encoded PID, one byte command ID, and its content. We think that the encoded PID is an ID used to identify infected hosts. As shown in the slide, the encoded PID is calculated based on the process ID of Tmanga. Next, the command and control function of Tmanga. The list in the slide shows the command and control functions implemented on Tmanga that we confirmed through analysis. It, cover, it covers basic functions for backdoor such as remote shell, sending host, sending host information or screenshot, deleting file and key logger. Interestingly, Tmanga has two types of remote shells. One uses cmd.exe and another uses powershell.exe. Okay, from here, we explain about the new RAT MCC Trojan used on host B in case 2. We call the second new RAT MCC Trojan. The reason why we call so we will be explained later. MCC Trojan file contains paths to the PDB file as shown in the slide. Unlike Tmanga, we couldn't find any unique string that implies the name of this word in the past. Uh, next is setup sequence and persistence for MCC Trojan. Poison IVB places the installer uh, instsrvoid.exe and the NCC Trojan Windows West Kit .dll. After that, the installer is launched. The installer copies NCC Trojan to, to the system directory listed in the slide. The target directory differs depends on the operation system environment. The installer then creates and executes fake service shown in the table. The fake service is guides a set of documents and tools called Windows Resource Key that Microsoft provide, provided for advanced users in the past. This slide shows decoded configuration data for MCC Torsion. What is interesting is that it includes an activation code MCC along with CNC server or NCC Trojan version information. 
The activation code has significant meaning for UCC Trojan behavior. Then CC Trojan enables its command and control functions only if it received activation code NCC from CNC server. The code we heard that the code NCC characteristics for this rat, we decided to new and decided to name this new rat NCC Trojan. Next is the CNC communication by NCC Trojan. NCC Trojan also communicates with CNC server using original payload structure on TCP. TCP payload is composed of 8 byte side field and encrypted data field. The side field, the, the side field expresses data size in decimal and are used to digit a field with invalid character X. As you can see the parallel example, the values, the values set on side field is very unique. Next, as for data field, it is encrypted by AS in CFP mode. The key length is 256 bits. The values of, of the key and the initialization vector are as shown in the table. And this slide shows decrypted data field. This decrypted data field is composed of sizing 8 bytes, commanding 1 byte, content in variable length and padding. Because AES is block cipher always, padding is required. Interestingly, the size in data field is expressed, expressed in decimal and unused, unused area is filled with impaired character X, just same as size field in TCP payload. Next is the command and control function of NCC Torsion. The list in the slides shows command and control function implemented on NCC Torsion that we confirmed through analysis. It has such functions as remote share, sending disk information, file list or process list, uploading or downloading, downloading files, basic file operation and terminating process. Compared to Tmanger, NCC Trojan lacks information theft functions, such as sending screen capture images or keylogger. Instead of that, these functions, NCC Trojan has functions for evading detection, such as sending process list and terminating process. This difference might mean that NCC Torsion was designed for hidden operation. So far, we share the full detail of analysis result on the attack we observed. As a wrap-up for this presentation, we'd like to explain what we knew from the analysis results. We consider the relationship between the, the attack we observed and attack groups. TA428 has interesting overlap with several attack groups. First, the use of Royal Road RTF weaponizer. There are several attack groups that use Royal Road RTF weaponizer all of which are said to attribute to China. In particular, besides TA428, Temp.Trident, TIC, and Tonto use this tool. These are attack groups mainly targeting East Asia. Next poison IV that TA428 used 
The poison ivy used by TA428 isn't standard poison ivy. It has unique traffic structure. Palo Alto Networks calls this variant S5B. S5B is reported to have been used in attacks against Hong Kong in the past. S5B use during this attack was also launched by DLL side loading using lasttls.dll. In addition, the poison IB used for lateral movement has also unique characteristic. In the attack we observed, poison IB was DLL side loaded using an application called Hot Player Mini. This is an extremely rare technique. This is known that Dragon OK has used Hot Player Mini in the past. Dragon OK is an attack group that targets East Asia and is said to belong to China. Just same as TA428. Thus, TA428 is similar to many APT groups that are said to attribute to China. This slide summarizes the conclusion of this presentation. As a result of analyzing the attacks by TA428 that we newly observed, there were several findings. First, Operation Lifetime IT by TA428 has been in place since at least March 2019, and its TTPS hasn't changed for more than a year. It continued to target mainly government agency in East Asia. Second, in addition to RTF file generated by the Royal Road RTF weaponizer, Poison IB, and Code Extract that were known to have been used in the group's attack. The group also used two to exploit MS. 70010 for lateral movement, NetBio scanner for environmental investigation, credential stealer and new advanced rat tools such as T-Manga and NCC torsion. TA428 used Royal Road RTF weaponizer, which was also used by Tick and Tonto. In case two, the group used multimedia player, hot player, which suggests relationship with Dragon OK. As such, the result of analysis on attacking method or attack two that we observed this time revealed that the, the attack by TA428 has relationship with other attack groups that attribute to China. Finally, the attack by TA428 will continue attacking even more. We hope that the content of this presentation will help you to detect or block the attack by TA428. As an appendix one, we'd like to announce that the traffic decryption tools for T-Manga and NCC Torsion will become available soon. We will announce the download link, download URL on our Twitter account in this slide. Please download and try if you're interested in. As an appendix two, we share the IOCs that we retrieved by analyzing the attack by TA428 we observed. This slide contains the file hash and communicating domains of that in case one. This slide contains the file hash observed in case two. This slide contains communicating IP address and domain 
observe in case 2. Please utilize them for your detection or research. Thank you for your attention.